is 5-4, and we're talking about relations from triangles. So I'm going to call this um, – what – can someone help me name this side? This is going over stuff that we learned in Chapter 1, actually. What – can someone name that side for me? Nope. Just the side. Nope. Not A, not A, B, C. It would be line, segment, A, B. All I do is I, this right here, the one that I just kept going over. That side right there. You never use three, three points to name one side anyways. You only use two. It's two endpoints. No. So, if I ask you to name that side, that's how you would name it. What does side AB look like? Is it the biggest, the smallest, the medium size? And I know I said I said I said for this one, I want you to use your eyes because we're going to make a connection that actually is true. What what angle is this one across from? Do you see how this is the smallest side, and across from it is angle C? The smallest side will always be across from the smallest angle. So AB is the smallest side. And I'll guarantee you angle C is the smallest angle. How else could I name angle C? Let's pretend there was more than one way. Like if there was a line here, what would I name this angle that I just redrew for you? What would I name that angle? Angle what? BCA, B, that's one way. Or what? ACB. Or we could call it angle C if there's no other lines. Like if it was just like this, we can call that angle C because there's only one angle that can happen at that vertice. Do you guys see the difference? Yes or no? All right. So here's the theorem. This is theorem 5-9. And it states, yeah, if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the larger angle. lies opposite the longer side. So, yeah, it does. Does everybody see that the red side of the triangle is the smallest side, yes? So this angle over here would be the smallest angle. Does everybody see this is the medium sized? Yes? Across from it, looks like that, this would be the medium sized angle. And then finally, This side right here looks to be the longest side. So this will be the longest or biggest angle. You see how I color coded it to try to help you guys out match what matches up. This is a theorem that will work every single time, but you won't, you won't use your eyes. They're going to give you measures. So they will tell you like, um, 
Correct. So the, the examples will look like this. This will say this is 4, this is 7, and this is 10. And they'll say something like, put the angles in order from least to greatest. Well, you know that 4 is the smallest side, so angle C has to be the smallest angle. 7 is the middle one, so you know angle A is the middle, and then B is across from the 10, so it has to be the biggest angle. That's what it'll look like. So it won't be using your eyes because you'll know they'll tell you that. Uh, there could be, but not right now. This is it. You tell me. What, what would we call that then? What happens if two sides of a triangle are congruent? What do we call that? And what do we know about the base angles? Right? Good question. What's the, uh, what do you call it? The smaller angle, which depending on your size, you know, would be the wide, and then the smaller angle would be the smaller angle. Yep. Yep. So with an isosceles. Since these angles are going to be the same, but they're going to be smaller than this one, this side will be longer than these guys. So that's actually our next theorem. Just the converse of that. So what if I told you the measures of the angles? What if I told you this was 62 and this was 50 degrees and I asked you I asked you to put the sides in order, from least to greatest. Are you allowed to use your eyes here to see which one looks like it's the smallest? No. No. What are you going to first do? Yes, and find out what? Yeah, you got to first, we got to figure out what angle N is. So how would we do that? Go ahead, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Careful. That's 50 plus 62. So what is that missing angle? No. No. Should be 68. The missing angle should be 68. Now what does that tell me if I'm looking for least to greatest? What's the smallest side? That's a 50. Smallest side is NM, and we would label that like this, NM line segment. Or what's another way I could write it? MN. Yes, MN line segment. That would be the smallest. What would be the next smallest side? Line segment NO, or? And finally, what would be the biggest side? Line segment MO or OM. Does everybody understand this theorem and questions on it? All right. Yes. Um, because all triangles have to add up to 180. So 62 plus 50 plus that unknown, this one right here. That's equal 180. We added these together. That was what, 92? No. Um, 120? One. Yeah, one. 112 plus x equals 180. And we minus that, minus that. And that's where we got x equals 68. All right. That is called the uh, tri. That's the triangle angle sum theorem. By the way, that they have to all add to 180. We need to remember those because that's how we use them on there. Uh, 
proofs. We have to name them. All right. Next theorem is called the triangle inequality. Theorem. I'm going to explain this one to you first, and then we're going to write it in words. So just watch for a second. Can you watch for just a second? All right. Let's see if I can do this. So does everybody see my um, my ruler? So the length of this first line, oh, it normally does a better job than that. Come on. So how long is that line right there? About. We're going to call it what? About 10 centimeters, yes? Or four, four inches if you want to do that, yes? Okay. How long is that one? How long is that one? Two inches. The red only. The red only. Do we need to make it green? Does that make it easier to see? All right. Could I make a triangle using those three links? I I'm talking. I'm talking about they have to meet from end to end and end to end, like the dots, the endpoints have to go on top of each other. Why not? No, no, no. You can move them. All right, let's try it. Maybe I can do it with this. Let's see if I do it like this. Because I think I can manipulate these guys a little better. Here. So the first one I made was what, four? So that's four, right? And then let's make another one. That was one. And we're going to make another one that's two. All right, I think I can do this. I'm going to rotate the line. No, 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 I, I don't want to, no, it can't extend. I got a lock. Lock. Allow move. Oh, move and rotate. There we go. How do I rotate it, though? No, allow move and rotate. I should be able to rotate it. That's okay, because this is worth it. Mm 
can make a, I'm guessing the point is you can make a clean glass mm -hmm. anyway. It's gotta be this. All right, I'm going to try to move it without extending it too much, okay? So there it is right there, right? I just barely moved it up. I just barely moved it up. Okay. Now watch what happens if I put this one. What are you noticing, guys? Right? Does that endpoint reach to where it's supposed to reach to? Even if I made that angle a little bit small. Like, guys, even when I make it straight, even when they're straight, what do you notice about these two lines? These guys, they can't even reach the end of the other one straight, let alone with a little bent in them, which would make the angle. Do you follow me? Even straight together, they can't even get from one end to the other end. So, that means so, two sides of a triangle have to equal to the two smaller sides have to equal to the two. Oh, you're so close, Peyton. That's so good, buddy. This is called the triangle inequality theorem. And what it states is, this is the way the book says it. We're going to say it a different way. They have to be greater than. They can't equal. Because if they were equal, they could be on top of each other and reach the endpoints. But as soon as you put a little bent in them to make that angle, it would shorten it and not be able to reach the endpoint. So this is called... The triangle, and basically it says two sides of a triangle. It still wouldn't longer. work. Because uh, it, it wouldn't hit at the end. Like, you could make a triangle, but it wouldn't be, it would look like this, Peyton. You have the long one, and then here's the short one, and then there's the short one. Like, is there a triangle being made? Yes. No, I mean like but the I... short one and the short one. Like you combine, you say you combine the short one into this. You know? Right. And then you the don't long have a... one becomes an angle. Like but then you, but you don't have. But in order for a triangle, a triangle can only be how many sides? The three. But and what I'm saying is you cut it in half. But it has. So you combine one of the two, right? You combine that shorter one and the longer one to make a single one. Right. That's supposed to be. You know, then you only have two sides. And then you go and you split the um, longer one in half. Then you have, you you don't you didn't use the three things. Yeah, but it, was, it would make a triangle. But it, you're not using the length that I said. Yeah, I know. I'm just Makes sense. Like, you could technically make it with a similar. Yes, I agree with what you're thinking. But this is what this theorem is supposed to show us: is that two sides of a triangle um, must. Add to be longer than the third side. So really easily, these questions can look like this. This is a very easy question. Um, that they could ask you. And these measurements and these measurements make a triangle. Um, Why not? The two other ones do not equal 40. Which one's the biggest side? 
and 18 plus 19 is only what? And 37 is not greater than 40. Therefore, no, this would not make a triangle. That's your work that you would show me, by the way. Does everybody see what I just did there? That is your work. That is what I expect to see on your paper. I don't expect to say yes or no's. I expect to see that work. All right, so try this one. Would this one work? I don't want to know yes or no. What do I want to do? Yes. 33 plus 37 is what? 70, right? And 70 is greater than 66. So check. Yes, this can make a triangle. Does it have to be like one? How much bigger? Just bigger. Oh, you see, you can have like... So if it was 0 0.1 bigger, 0 0 0 0 0. technically yes, your angle would be like 0 0.0 for the bottom angle, and your top angle would be like 179.5. It would hardly be any angle. You understand? Yeah. So it just has to be bigger, technically. It wouldn't be much of a triangle. It would look like this, Peyton. You wouldn't even be able to really tell that it was a triangle. But it would work. Yes. No, we're getting ready to leave. All right. What, um, where it gets a little trickier is this kind of question. Please pay attention to this. This is the best question. This will be probably on the EOC if they're going to do these. Um, these are the ones they love to do. What if I told you that one of your sides was 11 and one of your sides was 16? What is the missing side? It's not a right triangle. You could do, um, so like you would combine, you would combine 11 and 16, 16 and 7. And that meaning that your x would equal greater than or equal to or greater than would be greater than 27. So our missing side, Peyton, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yes. Because how many sides does it have? So there's, that's the only thing it can make. I know, I know my third side has to be what to 27. Yeah. No. Remember. These two sides added together have to be bigger than the third side. So the maximum, so it, it has to be less than 27. Has to be less than 27. But hey, did anyone say that the new side had to be the biggest side? So what could, what could be the biggest side? And so what would that mean? What would this have to be? No. Greater than 5. So this, by the way, this actually says 5 is less than x. Isn't that the same thing as me saying x is greater than 5? Uh -huh. Do you guys see that those two are the same things? This is just for fun. It's like me saying Mr. Martin is smarter than his students. What would it be? What would it be if we switch that around? The students are no. They're dumber, right? Less, less smart. No. Do you guys get what I'm show, showing you there? Or you could even do it like so and so is taller than like if I said Jack is taller than Jim, right? then when you switch the order, you have to change the middle word, right? Right. So, hey, look, look. If I said X has to be greater than 5, what if the 5 comes first? 
Look, it says x is greater than 5, yes? What's the way if I put the 5 first? Then 5 is what? Less than x. Those two are, these two things right here are the same, they mean the same exact thing. And then it says, this one says that x has to be less than 27. So any numbers between 5 and 27, not including 5, not including 27, could be my mystery side. Do you follow me, yes or no? All right, we'll see. Try this one on your own then. What's the inequality for my missing side? Do it in your paper. Well, yes, Brady. Brady, you can go ahead. <laughs> Brody, you can tell us. <laughs> Oof. No. So what? What we would do? Listen, listen, listen. This is. These two have to add to be more than the missing side. So I find my top number by taking those two and adding them together, which is 55. That's my ceiling. So I'm going to put the 55 here and go like that every single time. That's the highest. It can't be higher than 55. And then to find the low number, which is going to be here, you take the middle one or the, 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 the highest one here and subtract the lowest one. So 39 minus 16 is what? So 23. So as long as it's between 23 and 55, your missing side is good. Yep. But it's together. We're combining them. It's saying that it has to be bigger than 23, but less than 55. Find the missing. Set up the inequality. So what's it going to look like every single time? What's going to be in the middle every single time? There's going to be an X in the middle. What's going to be on the sides of the X? A less than sign and a less than sign. Yes? It's going to look like this every single time. How do I get this top number? What do I do with these two numbers? And so what's my top number? So it has to be less than 80. And how do I get my back number? I'm always going to take this one and minus the, the, and now, will it always be in the middle? Like, could I have written it like this? You're always going to take the bigger of these two and subtract the smaller and realize that's your bottom number. And then what they love to do is say, they give you those two, and then they say, 
Here's boxes. What kind of question is this when you're on the EOC? And so it'll say select all. So which ones would I check? I would check the 27. That's a 20. Would I check the 20? No. What does it say it has to be? X has to be greater than, is 20 greater than 20? So nope, not this one. Would I check the 80? Nope. Would I check the 81? No. It says X is what? Less than 80. So it means it's between 20 and 80. So I would check the 55. Those are the only two from that list that would work. Those are the two that could be the sides of the, the third missing side. It has to be, yes, you can't, it has to be bigger than 20, but smaller than 80. And so those are, these are the only two numbers that they gave me that fit that criteria. So 27 could be my missing side and guaranteed, yep, you could make a triangle. 55 could be my missing side, and yep, it would make a triangle. All these other ones would not work. Make sense? But they're going to be a select all, so it's going to be like, which ones could the missing one be? And you'd have to check all that would work. We're going to do them tomorrow.